And if you were to be personally sued, then they can seek a judgment and then attempt to come after your personal assets. Hey, my name is Steve Parr and I'm a corporate lawyer in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm here to answer the internet's most asked questions about incorporation. So what is a business incorporation? The function of a incorporation is essentially to birth a new person. When you do business, it's no longer you that's doing business, it's your business. And under law, your business is essentially a person. It's your incorporation that is going to be entering into that contract and is going to be the party that is going to potentially be seeking redress, seeking, seeking to sue another party or conversely to get sued itself. If you set up a company, so Steve's Window Washing Incorporated and then I go do business, something goes wrong, I break a window or one of my contractors, one of my employees breaks a window at one of my client's homes and then that client comes after my company. Well, thank goodness they can only go after uh, Steve's Window Washing Incorporated, they can't go after me personally. So that liability protection is really important. The cost of incorporating varies widely from firm to firm. Uh, you're generally going to see rates of, you know, and this is inclusive of filing fees and taxes of anywhere from thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars all the way up to twenty five hundred dollars. So uh, it really just depends on who you're going to work with. In Canada, you can incorporate at the federal level or you can incorporate at the provincial level. In BC, the filing fee to incorporate is three hundred fifty one dollars. That's payable to the government. The additionally, there's going to be a name reservation fee. So this is going to vary depending on how quickly you want to get this done from thirty one dollars to one hundred and thirty one dollars. Uh, it can take up to two weeks, two business weeks, to get to get one done if you don't pay the priority fee. Small business deduction. Uh, for earnings under $500,000 of profit per year, so not top line revenue, but at your actual profit after expenses, uh, if, if it's $500,000 or less, then that means that you're gonna be taxed at a much, much lower rate than, you would have ever, than what you would be taxed at personally. If you earn $500,000 at the personal level, most of that income is going to be taxed at just under 50% inside of BC. At the corporate level, it's going to be taxed at 11%. So that's a huge, huge, huge savings. Is there an annual fee? Yes. So annual maintenance is required for all companies inside of Canada, uh, within BC. Generally, the fees there are from like three to $500 per year per company. Annual maintenance covers things like your director's resolutions, your shareholder resolutions. So these are documents that form a part of your, what's called your corporate minute book. So your minute book is essentially the records that comprise the history, the story of your company. And it's important to keep that story in good order because if you don't, then when it comes time to do something significant, uh, you know, have like what's called a material transaction inside of your company, whether that's taking on a financing or if you are selling your business, then there's going to be due diligence. And so the party that is lending to your company um, or is taking an equity interest in your company or is purchasing the whole thing, they're going to want to take a very close look. If you don't have your minute book clean, then you're going to have to clean it then. And it's always much more expensive to do it then than it is to just do it on an annual basis. Not dissimilar from, you know, neglecting to maintain your car and then you want to sell it. You're like, okay, a $5,000 repair bill in my hands. I'll knock that off the purchase price. Does incorporating grant you an ownership right to that name? So if I incorporate Steve's Window Washing Incorporated, does that mean that nobody else can use Steve's Window Washing or a similar variation on that? Well, not really. I mean, they can't incorporate a company that's called Steve's Window Washing 2 inside of BC. They can't do that. So they can't incorporate that company. I could do that because I would notify the registrar that, hey, number one is my company, so it's okay, we can do this. But somebody else can't do that without my consent. But that's very different from how you present yourself to the world. You know, like I might have a corporate name called Steve's Window Washing Incorporated. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's how I'm known out in the world. That's not my necessarily my trade name. I could register a DBA, so a doing business as, and that would entitle me to present myself to the world under a different name. And it's not a trademark protection. So if somebody else incorporates uh, a, a different type of business and uses similar language to describe their services, uh, you know, has a similar sort of catchphrase or tagline, um, and they choose to, to establish a trademark over that, 
Uh, there's nothing that I can do, even if I was first in time with my corporate name. If brand protection is a high priority for your business, and it should be for any type of business that is substantial and is going to be around for you know longer than a few years, looking into getting a trademark is a really, really good idea. The cost of actually registering a trademark is coming down significantly. There's a lot of competition in the market these days. So be sure to reach out. I'll be happy to refer you to a provider. Getting a loan as a corporation. So if you want to get financing for your company, uh, you're gonna have a way easier time if you're actually incorporated than if you are personal. When you are first starting out, it is likely that the bank is still going to want you to personally guarantee that loan. Uh, because notwithstanding that you have a company and even if it's earning some revenue, they're gonna to wanna to have recourse in case the company goes belly up, but you still have some assets that with which you can make good on the loan. If you are looking to finance, to do a raise, to invest, to attract equity capital, to attract a venture, a venture capital partner, you are gonna to need to be incorporated. Selling a business. You wanna sell your business one day, so you know, I incorporated Steve's window washing, we did really well, and eventually we're making millions of dollars a year. So, uh, and last year, you know, we made over a million dollars in profit. So my company, you know, look, it might be worth three, four million dollars. Like we've got multiple, you know, you take the, you take the, the profit and then you multiply it by a few years, Depends on the industry that you're in. They call that the multiplier. Um, so let's just say that my company is worth three million dollars. I've I built it with another partner, so we each own fifty percent of the company. And assuming that we haven't already used it, we could make, take advantage of what's called the lifetime capital gains exemption. The LCGE is one of the most important, if not the most important, tax benefits that are available to entrepreneurs in Canada. If you are selling your business or you're intending to sell your business. Uh, somewhere down the line, really consider incorporation because um, a this you know you you have to have a certain amount of time that you have held these shares, so you can't just like incorporate tomorrow and then sell tomorrow and then take advantage of the lifetime capital gains exemption. So uh, it's something that you want to plan ahead of time. If you're selling the shares of the company, then it's also it's also a cleaner exit for you as a seller because a you know you could, might be able to take advantage of that big exemption. But the second piece is that when you're selling the shares of the company, you're just, you're selling absolutely everything that your company owns. Um, and that also means liabilities that the company owns as well. Who can incorporate a business in Canada? Any adult can incorporate a business in, inside of Canada. Uh, the age of majority is different from province to province, but in most provinces, that's gonna mean anybody who's 19 years, old, 19 years of age or older can incorporate. Uh, residency requirements. So in British Columbia, there are no residency requirements uh, to be a director or shareholder of a Canadian corporation. So yeah, can you can you do this yourself? Can you just incorporate yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You can incorporate through the BC Provincial Register, or you can do it through the Canadian Register. Uh, the websites are online. You'll you find them easily enough. It can be done. You need to make a name reservation, and then you go incorporate. So there's there's a process that you can do. However. There are disadvantages to doing it yourself. Yes, you're gonna save some money in the short term, but in the long term, if you actually need to do anything with your business, if you need to go to the bank, if you need to get financing, if you need to sell it, uh, if you just wanna have a clean and accurate record of what your company is, you're gonna be missing key organizational documents. I, to date, I have never come across a client that has come to me and brought their minute book to me, and unless it was prepared professionally by another lawyer, they are almost always deficient. And at that point, I must charge the client a certain amount of cash that's basically equivalent to the amount of money that they, that they had saved by doing it themselves in the first place to rectify or correct their minute book. Uh, and the reason for this is because it's gonna be a lot cheaper to do it then and because I can't do my job as a lawyer with a messy minute book. When is the right time to incorporate your company? This is a very, very important question and one that gets threshed out a lot. Um, I think in many cases people overthink the question um, because there's no one perfect time to incorporate. It is ultimately a question of timing and you know when when you're comfortable doing it. Many people say don't do it, don't do it until you're earning at least a hundred thousand dollars. You know, some people say ninety thousand dollars. Some people say one hundred fifty thousand dollars. However, like from a, strictly from a tax perspective. The moment that you can actually keep money inside of your corporation and don't need to pull it out personally immediately to pay for life expenses, then that's a good time to incorporate because you know if you can keep $10,000 of profit inside of your corporation at the end of the year, 
that's ten thousand dollars is going to be taxed at eleven percent instead of the mar the personal marginal tax rate. From a liability perspective, the answer might be today, even if you're starting a business on day one. There's also benefits to, from with respect to just legitimacy. You look pr more professional in the eyes of the persons that you're contracting with if you're incorporated. That is something from a branding perspective, from an image perspective. Keep in mind that liability wise, you are most likely to be sued by the persons who are closest to you. So that means your employees, your contractors, your business partners, uh, the people that you founded this business with, and, uh, and your clients and your customers, of course. So being incorporated provides you with a degree of insulation, a, a degree of protection that's not perfect. There are certainly things that you cannot do that, that are, that are you're gonna be vulnerable to, to a corporate lawsuit, but it does provide you with some degree of protection. Thank you.